Welcome to the Crucial Classics YouTube channel where we watch movies from the golden age of Hollywood together. You bring your copy and we both push play at the same time and let's just enjoy the magic of these films. The advantage of being a subscriber is you'll have the ability to watch these movies for free on the original sites that I find them on, but either way it doesn't matter because you're bringing your own copy. You'll always be able to watch along. Hi, welcome back to Crucial Classics. If this is your first time here, welcome. We start looking at the wall, and when I'm in this position, I really can't tell if I'm showing it to you adequately. <laughs> um, but this is the wall of my living room, decorated like that because old movies are important for the past 32 years. So today's title, we're just jumping on this one and giving our channel some back-to-back -back Paul Newman because it's Paul Newman, and we have discussed, I think... Uh, it's probably a fact that his uh, catalog has been the most protected uh, of what we're able to get access to for free so far. So uh, it just happens, first part of June, two of his huge hits have become available. So the previous title we just had was Ombre, and today's title is HUD from 1963. Patricia Neal wins Best Actress for her performance in this, and we really did discuss that fact because we compare it to, also available on this channel and the movie at this time of June 2nd, uh, June 3rd as of now, is available um, on Pluto TV, which was where it was originally available free to watch. Did I say? It's Love with a Proper Stranger, also from 1963, starring Natalie Wood and Steve McQueen. She is nominated for Best Actress, going up against Patricia Neal. And I just said it's a little interesting to me that Patricia Neal wins Best Actress Oscar in this movie for when we are realistic about it. I bet in total of this almost two hour long movie, she has maybe 10 minutes worth of screen dialogue time and yet that garnered her best actress compared to that very compelling performance we saw of Natalie Wood. It's just a hmm type of, I mean, not trying to read Patricia Neal, and I don't know if she ever won any other Oscars. She has a long, distinguished career, but it's interesting that this is the best actress Oscar performance in this movie. I mean, it's telling. There's, I understand how she could, This her storyline is very good in this movie, but she had some stiff competition that year let's just put it like that okay so that's to say that's like the big award for it but definitely oh gosh people yeah i've been studying hud because i will say like before it occurred to me to know that we can just source these free movies legally um you know in various platforms um that i can reference to you they've been playing hud all this year, I gosh, it's already June, huh? So it's definitely been this year that they've been playing it, and I've been watching it start to finish every time. This is one of those movies you can catch it from second one, and you are going to be enthralled until the very end. It's a very good just overall story, but damn, this performance of Paul Newman is just... <gasps> He's such... <gasps> he is such a horrible person in this movie, right? And just through and through... Oh my gosh, and so that's the reason why you just, you, the reading that goes on in this movie and just, but it's just what he means. Oh my gosh, so yes, it is such a compelling role of his. Okay, now to little Joey from Shane. He's getting his little screen credit. They're introducing him, whatever his name is. I don't remember his actual name, but little Joey from Shane is the young what does he always call him he calls him something but his little nephew in this movie that's shane grown up not shane but joey from shane right we see him introduced onto the you know, big screen in 53 is that what it is and 10 years later so now it's 10 years later here he is all grown up we also see him i don't know like a whole i don't brandon somebody dewild um he's also in harm's way He's in that movie as well. So, but I don't know how in the world I put it together that um, it's this little boy grown up. It just, I definitely know I had to have made note of his name. And when you just know that, basically you know his name, right? And then you're like, wait a minute. This little boy from Shane 
is all grown up right here. It is very, it's like, wow, he really grew into his features and stuff. Okay, so that's the excitement about this. This is probably, let's talk on this, the movie of Melvin Douglas now that I enjoy. Melvin Douglas has a very long career in Hollywood as well. Melvin Douglas is highly ingrained in some big movies from beginning in the 30s. I see him popping up in the very early 30s, like 33, 32, maybe earlier. I don't know. Was he in silent film? And then he's just steadily in significant movies. He's in A Woman's Face, right? That's 41. Um, he's in that movie with Mitchum and Ava Gardner. He, you know, and I he's in Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House, and I never really enjoy him. There's something about him. I think it's his voice. He's kind of maybe like a Vincent Price to me that is just like, no, thank you. Um, but that being the case, and that's kind of like consistent any time that he's got more of his dark brown, black hair or whatever, younger, I can do without him, seriously. But I honestly also see he is in lots of important films throughout the heyday of Hollywood. And I don't know, is this his final movie? He is old as hell in this movie. He is really a convincing old man, and he has been acting in film for um, 30 plus years at this point in time. And this is the movie where it's like, he is so much not giving me his typical Melvin Douglas performance that kind of gets underneath my skin. That is very enjoyable, but I just, let's, cause I'm gonna talk throughout the movie, but this is the thing. I have studied this movie so much, I cannot stand him in this movie, though, either for his character that he is portraying. He is so holier than thou, and I mean, when he even gets down to explaining what his beef is with HUD, I don't like that. I do. I, he is just not the nicest person himself, okay? Like, let's don't lose track of that. Let's discuss why I think that we can honestly say that, too. So I'm chomping at the bit. I can't believe it that we get to have this. I'm excited as hell. This is exactly the type of crucial classic movie that is what this channel is for. Let me, that being the case, play you the channel info video. I'm trying to, I can't tell about how long I've been talking, but now is the time to let you know what we do here on this channel. Hi. Given this could be your very first time on my channel, I have a little intro spiel. I'm gonna be including these in the beginning of all my videos. I will have a timestamp on it so you can skip past it once you become a subscriber and don't need this info each time. But my goal is to spit this out as quickly as I can. So get ready because I am going to start speed reading this, but just listen because I'm giving you all the info you need to know to successfully view the videos on my channel. So ready, set, Let's go. This is a Classic Movies Watch Along Reaction channel. Every reaction video uploaded here is because at the time of uploading it, I found the subject movie available to watch for free on a 100% legit free streaming site. These sites are going to include, among many others, Tubi TV, Pluto TV, Amazon Prime, Crackle, Plex. You guys are familiar, right? That is the advantage of being subscribed to my channel with your notifications turned on because if you're viewing my videos, my uploads here, close to the time that I put them up, you are likely going to be able to use one of those sites to view the actual movie along with me for free. The point of my channel is to watch two videos at the same time, the one of me reacting and your copy of the film. There are multiple ways to do this two video watch together, and I will always include a 23 second video in the body of each of mine and my uploads, and then I also link that video in the description of each video. So. YouTube's goal is to have you on their platform as long as possible, and I've learned that I'm not allowed to include direct links to these movies that take you off-site. But that is what I want to make sure is crystal clear. Please be respectful of my channel, and please view my content as intended, which if you're doing that, it's going to keep you here on the YouTube platform viewing the videos of me along with your copy of the film that you found. So these films are going to cycle on and off of the locations where I initially find them at the time of upload. That's the reason why it's required for you to have your own copy of the film to watch with me. That's always been the case for my channel. And hey, very easily, though, if you're subscribed with your notifications turned on, you may be able to watch the film on the site where I initially found it. But we all have to use common sense, and that lets us know that you can watch these videos of me along with whatever copy of the movie that you source on your own. And that's going to be regardless of the original free location where I found it at a blip in time. So these videos of mine are timeless, and I've learned the hard way that I can't take the responsibility of providing you with a location to watch the film. That could get me into trouble. But it's simply my pleasure to hopefully real-time make you aware of the fact that these gems from the golden age of Hollywood are legally available for for us to all enjoy. So thank you so much for being here and let's start watching the title you clicked on. Okay, so ways to watch the movie together uh, with me. 
so that you're watching this reaction and the movie on one screen if you would like to try and do that. Two tabs, me in one, the movie in another, pull the movie over to take up more of your screen. Uh, put a HDMI cable into your computer, into your TV, boom, there you go. Now you're watching it even on your TV. Or you do picture in picture on me allows me to shrink down and then you can move me over the movie. However, I think in Pluto, they also have picture in picture functionality. So if you want to shrink the movie down and you put it over this blurred muted box space of it here on the screen with me, up to you, decide what you want to do. Let me get my headphones. I can see I am missing that step and then we'll do our countdown and I cannot wait to watch this one. Okay, I'm so excited. I don't know that I've mentioned the place currently at the time of upload that I see this movie available legally for free is on Pluto TV. If you need your own copy, leave me out of it, okay? I'm just trying to help you out if you need a copy of the movie. It's available for free. But hey, this is such a crucial classic. Do you own it yourself somewhere on the cloud? And um, my runtime I am seeing is going to be a couple of seconds less than whatever is the original you know, movie film time showing on Pluto. Mine is coming up an hour, 51 minutes and 38, 39 seconds. And I feel like there's a saying 45. So again, you know what that's probably telling me at the very end of the movie because pushing play, they both are in sync. This movie, that because it's going to start immediately, I've tested it out. Push play. Music is starting. We are getting to work. Um, so if there's a couple of seconds longer of their runtime on their platform, they probably have like a Sony Pictures or their own little logo that they add at the very end there that's adding on those extra seconds. So that is that. Playing in three, two, one. I mean, immediately. This is one of the quickest starts to the sound of a film that we've ever gotten. I'm surprised that they put Paramount up first for just how immediately we're into what's going on here. Oh, you know what else started? Maybe even a couple seconds quicker than this. Well, no, not a couple seconds, but right away like this too is Pal Joey. Okay, it is really loud. Very stark, right? Wow. And this is supposed to be Texas, right? Brandon DeWell. Does um, Paul Newman have anything to do with production of this? We just watched Ombre. And at the very end of it, it said it was done by Ombre Productions. And I'm thinking that had to have been him. So, okay, we just have a whole bunch of people. I don't know if this thing won other Oscars, uh, but definitely we got Patricia Neal. We didn't see costumes yet, right? Maybe we won't. Oh. <gasps> of course, Miss Thing doing her thing. But we saw it. Um, Was she costumes in Bojest? I know we saw something recently where I was like, oh my gosh, this is the earliest that we've seen her doing the costumes. Okay, this is from a novel. Great music. Wow, people, we oh, produced by Martin Ritt. People were gonna make a Martin Ritt playlist. Good gosh, I just saw him do something. He did ombre. He did ombre. And I was saying it's such a respectful of culture movie. He also directed Sounder. I'm making a Martin Ritt playlist. I am starting to see I love a Martin Ritt film. It has a definite, refined, respectful touch. And this one is just pulling. We get to the core of who people are in this movie. No sugar coating. So that's this dude's car. It is a pink Cadillac. Didn't Aretha Franklin have a song like that? Driving around in her pink Cadillac. That sounds like something that the um, is it Sally, Mary Kay people. Chicken Friday. Mm. 
Yum. Oh my gosh, this boy and his eating in this movie is impeccable. I love the way um, <laughs> he eats. <laughs> He'd be a good mukbanger. You guys know what that is. It's people that have YouTube channels for sure, and they eat with you. You watch them eat. I frequently do it with you too. <laughs> it was hard, right? Well, have you seen him? Well, he's not going to ask this dude if he's seen where he went after he broke his window. My goodness. He's not interested. It's all good. HUD owns everything about himself and leans into it, so I don't need to be like, oh, let's just experience what he don't give an F if we <laughs> experience. <laughs> So there's the big old pink Cadillac in front of a house in what looks like a very small town. That full that house. His little banner that he was hanging up in the trees could point to this house. I mean, wow. Seriously, ladies, have, have you ever had that type of a night where your shoe is left outside? gonna go honk the horn. People, I cannot believe we were able to watch this. Oh, okay. Is that hut? Honcho. Okay, so... They probably got home here at five in the morning. It's probably only like seven right now. She wasn't right there, huh? but this person is. This dude is from uh, the Honeymooners a lot. He just will play any needed role. They're making tracks. Yeah, HUD. Right. He said, I'm going to kill him. HUD. HUD in the scene.
And that's true. My head be driving this car zoom. I did not know the boy was just gonna say that, but I mean, ooh, leaning into the curb, dang, and just wow, that cannot be good for your shocks. I mean, he doesn't really seem to have much respect for his car. I had a convertible. That was so beautiful. And I treated it like a queen. Got more than I paid for it. I sold it. Wasn't practical. Damn, I mean, he ran over your flowers. <laughs> those were done. Um, those, those are not happening anymore. Old people are always talking about flies in the house. Her voice is exceptionally distinctive, right? I mean, I don't breakfast in bed. I mean, it's just very gravelly. I kind of think it's the way she works with her voice in this movie, with this southern accent that... And so now here goes his dad. Here will be. I mean with a man like that, his dad, and HUD, they are never going to have a direct conversation unless they will be cutting each other down. But, I mean, I don't like to break the law in my house, HUD. Okay. And it HUD did that just now, hoping to scare them off. He wasn't aiming at any of them. Before he goes...
also the old man just was up all night too, but just in the house while these guys were out here. I'm actually surprised Hud is gonna stay. He already told his daddy he has other things to do today. It was cutting into his time off. And you could tell he don't give an F about what his dad wants to do about anything. trying to spoil I just I mean it is it lets you know that the movie is directing our thoughts right so he will just um, come back to the house and get in his car he's a grown-ass man I mean his dad's not gonna be able to forbid him from leaving right Damn, dude, that is destroying your car. Hmm, I'm surprised he asked Jesse if he needed help. Same way Glenn Ford drives off with Gilda, right? Like, dang! Somebody smells a Chanel number five. Five! Texas. Oh, he ain't trying to dialogue with her. And he's going to read her, like, you know, save some of these groceries for until we get home. <laughs> right? Boy, the sound in what I'm listening to is impeccable. So it, okay, this is a little enterprise that employs those two dudes that were out at the cow and her, right? And she's the full-on housekeeper. Oh. 
Hud is totally a man ho. He uh, just spent all day. Bart's gonna sleep at night. Why is it making noise in the dark like that? That's special. He has a special relationship with his grandpa, huh? So his grandpa has been raising him. She's barefoot, huh? Yeah. Yeah, her voice. I'm gonna set some biscuits. Now the swang. I have that action. I mean, he is just constantly shooting his shot with her. I'm surprised he's letting this kid go with him. No. Alright, see, there was obviously, like, an unspoken red message in that little comment that he made. But what I don't like about what we will find out later is that whatever the meaning of that statement was is not whatever his issue is with HUD. You yeah. know. It's like, yeah, drive it at like a hundred instead of fifty five. <laughs> I mean, because you gotta be a drop dead gorgeous, just a jerk. I cannot deal with a man that is a hateful human being like this, but also drop dead gorgeous. I wouldn't give an F about the looks. Maybe. But you'd try and stick to it, right? Like, he don't ever want anybody to talk to him, huh? 
Damn. He's just constantly brooding on, like, the very low vibration stimulation that he is seeking for life, right? Because, again, just, uh, he's, he's pretty base. He spent his whole afternoon, according to what Alma could deduce, with Chanel number five, right? And then, what, he just came home to get cleaned up, to prowl around again. And he tends to be getting thrown through windows or throwing people through them. Mr. Kirby's kind of creepy, huh? <laughs> From here to eternity. Well, he just told you he read it twice. Gross, Mr. Curdy. No, but it's he. It sounds like the people that I see. Uh, why is he gonna try and tag along again? I can't ever understand what he calls him Fan Tan. Because he can't remember his dad either, but his mom died too. Yeah, he is an orphan. He's going to a brothel, right? Like, I just now is... Because, I don't know, he just said some lady's house, and then he's like, it's not some place that you've probably heard of. And then he's like, oh, I have... Well, why would you hear about it? Unless it's a um, den of iniquity. Oh, he made it back home. It's the next day. You know I don't like the lack of hygiene. Gross. You just get dressed in bed. <laughs> Talking crap to Alma about how hot it is. You know you sleep hot and in the summer too. Rinse off.
Oh, dang. But if it's not, my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. Oh yeah, run along. Like they don't get to be a part of kind of having to process this right now, right? It's between them, these three, the owners, right? This is what would be called a tower moment in life. That's what they just said to him. Well, himself. Some of that gravy. <laughs> oh, well, that's the read of a lifetime. So it's just gonna leave. Yeah, I mean, again, they cannot ever have a conversation about the issue without these bigger concepts, themes of who they are as human beings. Just overshadowing their ability to communicate with each other, right? And they just are always speaking too. This is the source of our communication breakdown. I cannot hear any more of what you're saying to me yet because you're an unprincipled man. Oh, but don't worry, you have enough for both of us. I'm out. And in a way, I mean, I'm surprised that his dad kind of didn't say that HUD, you know, 
you are going off of a lot of assumption that just because you have, you know, worked here since a child, that any of this is yours. having to round up all the cattle. Okay, in a way, he was kind of looking out for his father and said to him, just go home and sleep it off for a little, you know, take a nap. You are old as hell, your father time, just go take a nap. And now, you know, and then, yeah, I guess, okay, it's like, they really Everything is an insult to the two of them, right? Oh, if you tell me to go take a nap, no. Right? It's not because you're looking out for me, because you think that I can't cut it, so... Texas, like back in the days of Giant. I mean, isn't it hard to recognize that that's Melvin Douglas from his whole career? Just as far back as Mr. Blanding's. This is such a sweet relationship that Lon has with his grandpa because, I mean, I was super duper close with my grandpa like this too. I mean, I did never go to the movies alone with him as a teenager, but, <laughs> you know, I had a really close bond with him and would have enjoyed that. See, this is his grandpa's concern for him. Be a young man to the one. This is cool, right? To see the movie theater back in the day. Okay, well, it's just a little sense of community, right? Like, that's... Yes. <laughs> just before you get started watching the movie. Okay, this is my favorite scene in this movie. The way this young man prepares his food. I told you, he eats. He would make a perfect mukbanger look. Okay. Yes, Lon, I want it. to like go get a sit down burger I want a red robin
his own business. Oh, so when you roll with HUD, you're paying. Let's don't make a party out of it. So that's the extent of, like, worrying about him. They're just... All right. Well, all right then, Grandpa. Some wet? Head, look ahead. Do we see Alma again right here? Yeah, I mean, HUD can never be gentle toward this dude, right? Okay, look, I, at the very beginning I said Hud is a horrible person, but I really don't like his dad either. But I mean, not to say because Hud is at heart. <laughs> Just trying. No, I mean, but it's like his dad gives him no exceptions to the effed up conclusion that he makes it clear that he has of HUD. This scene is weird. Um, I was, I did, we're gonna see Alma again, yes. I kind of just don't like the way we're not focused on the grandpa so quickly. But I guess he wasn't having a heart attack, right? It seems like this was like I'm selling. So he has a little one bedroom shack here.
Hmm. He has never showed this much interest, right? In anything to do with her. What else are you gonna? <laughs> Come to, to bed with your curlers. Dog, yeah. Look at her now, she's. It's the time for him to leave now. said that I would be trying so hard to not be affected a little bit. Alma, you need to look out because you know everything that's up about HUD. Mm, that was right. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, Lon just got jacked up, huh? Oh, did he get knocked out? Yes! Oh, dang. Mm, mm, mm. Damn. Look, like, where's Hyde? Okay. We just an ombre, so I'm like, if you have to puke, <laughs> be careful because you're gonna have to sit next to it for a long time. Ball Newman is strong, I just carried him upstairs. Hyde was a semi-decent human being right there.
Well, Alma does take care of him, huh? He's so young to her, she really just mothers him. It's awkward for him, right? Poor Lon, so he doesn't remember his dad. And Hud was telling him about how, like, basically right away when he was born, his mom died. Wow. Why is it quarantined? Is it quarantined as they're waiting for these results? Or is it quarantined because they now know the results? And so this was crazy. They took a couple of cows, injected them with whatever they biopsied from their herd. For control of the disease. Yikes, that would be a horrible sign to have to have on your property for anybody to need to see. I feel like they are still waiting for the results though, right? Yeah, they're just playing the waiting game right now. It's just, like when I said like a tower moment, it's like... Good gosh, the day be, the day HUD is just effing around in some married, not even the one we saw in the restaurant with his dad, some married woman's home, no cares in the world, you gotta get woken up at 6 o'clock in the morning to rush back over here, and then now, they're facing losing everything, son would Okay, so obviously it's not going to be um, chilling with them. I was sawing wood. Does that mean snoring? That's when, when we were watching Talk of the Town, I said there's all kinds of phrases for what snoring is. I feel like when he just, I was sawing wood up there. He was snoring. But I was talking about Lon. Yeah, he's a poor little orphan. His mom passed away, seems like, as he was born. He doesn't remember his dad, and we haven't been told why. But then there's Alma, who just, you know, how long has she been here? But she definitely just views him as a kid that she mothers. And he's coming of age, so he's not seeing it the same way.
<laughs> oh, so he's already drunk and just looking for his next bottle. Rose hide in the middle of the day. Yeah, it is kind of actually creepy. And he's drop dead gorgeous, but oh no, check him out. Look at him. What is that reaction? Well, it's exactly what you're doing, dude. Just honestly, people, this from her, Love with a Proper Stranger, Natalie Witt, same year, same nominations for Best Actress. Kiwanis. She bruised his ego, is all that that is, ladies. <laughs> But at the same time, he technically is her employer. Look at her. I, I appreciate this from her. That's entirely what the situation is with this asshole. I mean, he's completely that, right? With a very delicate ego, don't they all? Like, the cockiest, coming across with the most confidence, just flaunting it, right? In this way, people, you know what I'm seeing? That HUD is, is a narcissist completely. They have the most fragile egos slightest little thing and then he is going to be like ruthless back to her right it kind of at first was a little just like this like she just wasn't giving him reception to his bs being drunk and all on her gross in the middle of the day nobody wants that Likely even from your own man, you know, and that's not who he is. And then it's like, oh, wait, excuse me. I was supposed to understand that, like, oh, there's some sincerity and actual, like, injury to your feelings if I am not receptive to your disgusting past right now. To where, like, oh, I needed to be accounting for not hurting your ego as opposed to not being harassed at work, right? 
And so, I mean, what did he walk away telling her? Oh, well, it's too late, honey. You already got it. it to me, that sounds like I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep trying. I'm walking away and my ego isn't all jacked up. But then, let me interact with you a little bit later. I'm ego bruised. I'm ruminating. And I'm going to be as disrespectful to you as possible. And oh, by the way, I also am your quote-unquote technical employer. That silence that we got from her for that whole scene is her at a crossroads of like... Is it possible for her to continue working here with this level of harassment? When for whatever reason, yes, is he drop dead gorgeous? Yes. So there is that aspect and element of it that of course she could go for, but she's sticking to, she doesn't want such a horrible person as him for her man. And as long as she might not be interested in that, you know, is her job at risk now? jerk uh, he was ruthless cheated oh uh, he didn't just be careful in again is hot like his head gonna let him stay I like this scene <laughs> I have me a little drink He always gets into trouble in this spot right here, right? Lawn. Lon just tries to have his little phrases to say, but... Okay. Lon. Oh, and thus, Alma, right? Hmm. So it would have to be somebody that would intrigue him at the level or beyond of Alma. Is he going to say that about Alma? I'm sorry, I was talking. What did he just say to Hud that he is like, I do? I do what, Lon? Wait, have somebody that you have your sights set on? Oh, but no, he's not necessarily making a move. The girl is looking and smiling at him. I love this though.
See, this is just what HUD does by patronizing these places. Oh, that, well, that happened quick. Oh, it's not done. just likes to fight. He doesn't even seem to take it personal. He's having fun right now. Look at him. dead. Oh, he was his older brother. He, he could hear it, yeah. Okay. Mm. And because he was driving, huh? soft-hearted so you didn't just write me off kid like my dad has there we go we got a slight there was HUD letting his walls down he carries a lot with that right hmm okay hmm I never really picked up on that's it that's the source wound And he just is not healed on that. So, thus, every way that he shows up. the boy drinking whiskey see see People, don't talk to each other like this unless you don't give an F about the relationship and there will be no repairing it. Shame on a parent. I really don't like Melvin Douglas right here. What is your ownership of this, Douglas? This boy 
still lives in your house. See, what's jacked up about this? HUD thinks for 15 years that his dad's problem with him is the accident of his dad, or his brother's death. If you can verbalize all of this as what your effing problem is, shame on you for not saying it in a more parental way, like long before here. Yeah, dude, I mean, F you. With your holier than thou Well, dude, take a little bit of ownership of your son. Okay, well, that'll be for Lon to do. But this is definitely between you and your son. And again, it's like, that's jacked up. Parents step up a bit more, you know what I mean? Like, how your kids turn out is... Not to say that Hud is not an asshole <laughs> and that, you know, his dad could have tried to do a good job with him. But you can't tell Hud about himself for the first time that detailed. Yeah, here goes Hud. Right? All right, hun. Yeah, Hud does not allow himself to be counseled or um, caressed or cared for, right? Consoled maybe is the word I meant more than counseled. Um, but yeah, no. That read from his father right there just gave me a lack of respect for his father. You do not hold on to something that you can that detailed and that much with articulation expressed to somebody for the very first time, making them aware of what all your grievances are with them. I mean, and you're in the role of their parent too. You wash your hands of your kid. As soon as you didn't like what you were seeing, younger than him being this kid's age, it's still your job. You still have work to do. Impact that, affect that. Old fogey. It's just, I don't break the law right here, huh? you know, I mean, it's just like, it just, To be understood, Hud is who he is, and he's a lost cause. <laughs> Look at the boy.
I mean, okay, and so like I said, yes, HUD is a lost cause. I still haven't gotten the verdict. <laughs> What's this tricky deal? of his property. <laughs> I love this. It is true about this old man. This is just a wounded individual right here, HUD. This is the self-over self-medication that he is always indulging in, right? Just drinking that jack straight from the bottle. And it puts him in this, mo look at how cross-eyed he is. It puts him in this beast mode that there are no excuses for, but Good gosh, we are getting a great study of where it comes from. <sighs> no good, Hud. No good. No good. No good. So this scene, analyzing this, the last Alma had to interact with this asshole, he had just completely disrespected her. She's been keeping her distance. You know she hasn't softened up toward him. She ain't playing games with him to say she's not interested.
And see, that really wasn't who HUD was. Given the fact, I'm just, I'm not giving him any passes yet. Given the fact that he didn't just destroy that little boy's face, something inside of himself stopped him from doing all of that, right? Given what HUD, given what HUD will say to her later, I just really kind of gather that what just happened there is the extent of what would have happened there. Um, I mean, there would have been no circumstance where Lon wouldn't have just stepped in and saved the day like that. But the, for the fact that HUD didn't just pummel Lon, something about that whole scenario was not who HUD was to have followed all the way through and plunged into that, right? Like, I'm not, I don't want to excuse or condone or, but we are just seeing so much of what brews inside of him. Oh, is he there? Your Newman zone. <laughs> okay, okay. Dad, da, okay. Well, your family could be able to stay on this land. Okay. And you're holier than thou view on it. Yep. Oh well though, uh, it's immoral. I hate it. Okay, so that's all there is. That's the only possible viewpoint on it then, uh, right? And you're a piece of crap because you don't agree with it. Dad's holier than thou, handing out scripture like he wrote it. <laughs> never done anything wrong himself. Daddy, you ain't never been wrong. Um, why? Because Daddy thinks so, right? It's like, it's one thing to say, maybe I made some mistakes, but when you just carry yourself as if you're holier than thou, then... That's lip service. You don't believe that. You don't believe you're ever in any kind of the wrong with your son, specifically, especially, right? And then obviously, too, it just, like, speaks a lot to that dude's character where it's like, okay, you know, I could possibly be self-reflective and say that. I am the type of person that maybe when I get upset, I do clamp up. I don't like to necessarily engage in shit like I would rather maybe just step back um but when again like I said in the course of you doing that you are formulating 
all of these very articulate, clear diagnosis reasons why you are writing off your child and holding everything that you are clear about against them without addressing and parenting them on, shame on you. And then at just some unbeknownst time to them, they're going to get the full read of their life memo from you of how you despise every aspect of who they are living and breathing in your presence. Shame on you. So much of that has to do with the ball that you dropped to not have corrected and addressed shit with them before you just want to destroy them like that. This, I cannot stand this old man in this movie, dude. And this scene is exceptionally intense. But I mean, yeah, this is rock bottom for them. And I don't know, you know what I mean? It's okay. It gets into the treasure of the Sierra Madre. They're up there on the hill. They are finding gold. Okay, how long do we stay here? Oh, old man. Old as hell, old man. Oh, I only need, let's only stay until 25000 apiece. Well, that's not enough for all of us. Oh, it's all the rest that I need for the rest of my life to live out the rest of my life in full retirement. And Humphrey Bogart has to say, well, we're like half the age of you, full. That's totally selfish of you. You're only thinking of yourself. Let's only stay up here, work this, and get as much as you need to live scot-free for the rest of your life. And we'll be able to get by for a couple of years. That's jacked up. You're only thinking of yourself, this old dude right now. Okay, fine, dude. Yes, you've lived your old as hell life. You didn't ever want to destroy the land with the oil. But now look at what is happening. And there is oil on your land you have absolutely no care and concern for your son. We understand that. But what about your grandson? There is money to be had to sustain life. Being able to keep this land. Being able to just stay in your little house. And nope. Nope. He's not going to do it. And why? Because he's at the end of his life. He doesn't have much left to worry about. It's very selfish and only what's best for him. I mean, he could very much control that he'd be like, you know what, I, they tell me there's oil on this land, I'm only gonna allow them to put up like three rigs, Let's enough for us to live off of, right? We don't have to destroy this land with all of those fracking the land, you know, and it's just like, there's no um, compromise with him, right? It's all or nothing with him. I'm glad I talked through that because anybody that's an animal activist is um, up in arms right now. Is this lie? I, it's some type of a... What, right? Oh, are they just gonna bury... Lime! That's, that's why I said that, right? They're just... Are they burying this in place? They're just gonna cover this up? I mean, look at the two next generations that are in the exact same boat as this old man of losing everything, but he has days, they have years.
I mean, that's what's missing with this old man. Like, there is no um, allowance for any correction for himself. This would be a moment in his whole entire very stubborn, holier-than-thou life to do that. Say, you know what? Okay, for my grandson, who I seem to adore, and I just think he's a good little boy, right? He's got to be able to have a future. Um, we do this, right? And we do it to pass it down between our generations. He should be able to be set up for the fact that we have all of this. And I got to pivot right now on how we could keep this going. Is there a major thing that has happened that would be the reason for this compromise, right? Where Were this not the circumstances right now, of course I wouldn't make this type of a move to allow the oil but I'm thinking about somebody outside of me oh well now they're family we can destroy each other, but you come at any one of us and we've all got each other's back. <laughs> Often. Maybe now, sir, you could consider some other opportunities that are available for you to continue to bring income into your household on this land. But no, this dude writes scripture, right? So. <clears throat> That's fair enough, right? But he's doing that to his family too. I mean, is HUD an asshole? Yes. I mean, and like I said, is he banking on a lot of assumption that no matter what, when his dad passes away, that he is going to allow that HUD gets to inherit anything of his? <laughs> I mean, yes, he is. He's banking on that. And his dad just let him know. He's like, you might get some of this when I pass away, but... At the exact same time, then? Well, yeah. Hud, 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 why is he here this far into his life? knowing the struggle of the relationship he has with his father. Mostly doing a hard day's work though here too. That day he dipped out to not sit there by the dead cow, but we have seen him doing his day's work and he said he's been doing that since he's 10 years old. Dad, if you are not letting me inherit anything here, I think I'm probably out, right? And that'd probably be best for the two of us. But then, obviously, if he is still there, it's with an expectation or a thought process that he is entitled to some of this. Okay, old man. Now what? Okay, I don't know. Mm-hmm. 
she couldn't have been afforded to stay on either, right? Alma, you could have called about that yourself. This is kind of an overly dramatic departure to me. I just feel that way, but at the exact same time, I don't know what the alternative is either, okay? <laughs> I also don't know what the alternative is, um, but it's one of those things, it's like in a lonely place when Bogart, you know, he smacks his agent, and the guy's glasses kind of crack the frame, but then he's acting like he got glass in his eyeball. And it's, it was, that's not what happened, you know what I mean? expectation that HUD might be moving on. I'm just throwing that out there, right? And so then this is necessary because, oh, you know, look at the shape she's in right now. She doesn't really want to have to be leaving, right? I'm just... Again, I don't know what the alternative is because he isn't necessarily leaving. Oh, he's coming out of the attorney's office. He probably in no way, shape, or form has the mentality of leaving, right? HUD has no um, self-awareness. However, here's what I'm saying. I totally believe that, people. And I'm not trying to condone anything. If for this, though, it is just a job and I get it, right? It's like he isn't family. He isn't... There's no obligation for her to want to try and work it out but I mean this is just a bizarre send-off and I truthfully do it's not like you're the one that got away right okay fine bye then I 
I'm the first one that ever got rough. Okay, fine, Alma, and you don't have to have experiences like that in life. However, I it's not like I'm a serial that I do that to women and oh, so you're the first person ever telling me that you don't like that. No, I've never done that before, right? And what had just transpired in his life, I'm not condoning his behavior, but this is one of these types of movies where it's a study, right? And he is just an exceptionally wounded person. And you know what one of the biggest wounds that he carries is? How much his father hates his guts. That's why I just say shame on a parent, dude. Like, you can destroy your child's life like that. Okay, just now back to the film. Why is he crawling on the ground? This dude. I didn't remember he said all of this. Dies despising his son. What did he just say? He has to buy a jacket for the funeral? He's already thinking about a jacket for the funeral. <sighs> yeah, he was long. Don't confuse that. It's true. There's still more. All right. 
fair enough, I, fair enough. Um, how did he help you, HUD? How did he help HUD, hun? And somebody doesn't do that to you. Not that old man. You think that old man let HUD make him quit? Please. He'd have lived to a thousand years old to not let that happen. What does he tell him? Like, hang on, you still gotta. Lon, well, um, this is how you're going out. I'm just totally bitter. How old was this man? I mean, Lon's acting like, I'm, but he's acting like he was 55 years old or something, okay? He was... How did HUD bring this about? HUD was looking into becoming um, the, uh, it's what's happening with Wendy Williams right now, right? Sorry. The custodian of his estate, right? Fair enough point that you did not have the best judgment in the world to go buy 20 sick cattle. Was that man well past retirement age? Does he have these two young bucks on his property? to where he could have been retired. It's just, it's, HUD's a horrible person, okay? <laughs> but it's, HUD did not make that old man pass away. And there's nothing wrong with this right here either. Okay, bye, Lon. It's called, are you 18? Is it time to go on on your own in life? Okay, well, do that. No, HUD. Okay, well, maybe that's what he's going to do. <laughs> um, HUD, you know... I don't know if you need to be offering life advice right now. Mm. Okay, well then, yeah, he's probably not gonna.
blank lawn is walking away. All right, let him go, hut. And at this point in your life, hut, if lawn is the only um, hope for companionship, for true companionship, you've got work to do. And, you know, being alone for the first time in your grown-ass life might be exactly what you need, too. But it kind of looks like he's probably just prepared to continue avoiding the work. Healing work, right? No, look at, no, he, he's not there. He's not prepared for it. Excellent. Excellent. I love it. Like and subscribe. <laughs> An amazing entry um, in Paul Newman's catalog. I mean, 63. He's done Hustler. Okay, so this, you know, quickly to discuss kind of a little um, biography thing I saw on Paul Newman one time. Um... It was, I think, I've told you guys about this before, but kind of up until Exodus, which for the longest time was available free with ads here on YouTube. I still see, it's still free with ads on various different platforms as of right now, people. Um, but they say, like, that was kind of the turning point in his career where basically what he had done is he bought out his contract. I don't know where he was signed at the time, but he was getting assigned from the Terrace and um, the young Philadelphians, and he just really did not find those roles challenging as an actor. So he buys out his contract. He was broke as hell, though, to, to be able to do that. Like, he didn't have the money really to do it. He was kind of committing his future income to be able to back, kind of back pay that. And he did, though, and then boom all of this stuff because 61 was the hustler i don't know did he have something in 62 but 63 we get this we get cool hand luke we get cat on a hot tin roof i mean it just maybe cat on a hot tin roof happened before exodus but um i mean he kind of didn't really come down in his just being a legend uh goat of an actor right here Okay, I mean, like, it don't get better in Paul Newman's catalog than this. Let's watch Hustler, though, too. I'm going to have to do that one on the member site, guys, um, because I don't think that we'll get access to that one free with ads anytime soon, and we don't need to delay, like, two years out crossing our fingers that that one comes about. But, yeah, I'm so glad that we have this for the time being on the channel. I mean, it's going to stay on the channel because you bring your own copy and you can dive into this at any point in time. But it's just miraculous that for the time being, it is available for free. Like and subscribe. Tons more titles coming um, of this caliber this month. And I feel like we will be able to keep it at this level ongoing. So thank you so much. Like and subscribe. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.